Packed with supplies of food and warm clothes, we're setting off just as the sun is starting to set. I can sense a genuine feeling of anticipation in the air, or perhaps that's just my own nervous excitement. So all of this belongs to my Sami community, and this is grazing land from Unnachero Sami, where I was born and raised in a reindeer herding family. What does this place mean to you? Well, this is home. This is uh, as home as I feel anywhere in the world. Tell me what you're doing, what's the plan? So in order to, to get any warm food, we need to uh, get the fire started. To be able to come somewhere like this is an immense privilege. And to experience it with someone like Leonard makes it even more special. This whole landscape and this whole region has been relied upon by the Sami culture for thousands of years. And to get to experience that firsthand with a man like this, that's a very special thing. I'm absolutely <laughs> starving. Cycling from the North Cape to here yeah. has given me one heck of an appetite. Well, this will uh, at least get you uh, below the Arctic Circle. I hope so. This, this food. <laughs> here we go. Mmm. Creamy, full of vegetables, and all important protein as well. Yes, yes. Mm, thank you very much. As we look out on this landscape, I can see that the greens are slowly starting to turn into browns and oranges and reds. Is this an important time for someone like you and the rest of your culture. The autumn is very, very important for, for the Sami people. It, it's the harvest time for, for the Sami. And now it's time to, to gather the berries, to pick the berries. We, we pick the blueberry, the cloudberry, the lingonberry. We catch the fish from the lakes. We hunt for the moose. We, we gather and slaughter some of the reindeer to have reindeer meat. So this time is really all about gathering the food that we need to survive for another year. Only in Sweden would they put cheese in coffee. This was actually something that we borrowed from, from the Finnish people who came from the east uh, when the mining started up here. They brought this tradition with, uh, with the coffee cheese. and. Uh, as, as well as the, the coffee, when that came to Scandinavia, we adapted to that. So, so again, we have been adapting to, to new things, but uh, still uh, the traditional way of life is it's pretty much the same. How extreme are the seasons up here? What does that do to the human body, but also, very importantly, the human mind? If you look on, on everything around us, the seasons and the, uh, the changing lights affects a lot of things in nature. And I think we are part of nature, so it, we just need to, to live with the fact that it also affects us. Do you consider yourself lucky to live here? Is it a privilege in your mind that you get to live out here close to the wilderness and, and see things like this, which people from all over the world only dream of seeing? Well, it's definitely a privilege. And I think for me, that meet so many people that really are fascinated of, of, of being here, of course, that makes me realize that I am a, I'm a lucky guy. <laughs> being able to, to be here. Oh, wow. I am looking out to the north and there is this kind of huge halo sitting around the top of the planet, around the landscape. In the modern age, of course, it's very easy for us with technology and science to justify and to tell us what this is. But if you lived out here, hundreds or thousands of years ago, I can very much understand 
how you would look into the sky and think there was something really rather godly and rather heavenly about these shapes. This is pretty incredible.